your word, Lord. We pray that you would speak to us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's such a joy to um, be back to share a few thoughts um, on Romans, and I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying the study of Romans. And um, today we're going to be actually looking at a very central topic uh, that is probably the crux of uh, the book of Romans. Um, the topic that's given for us for our meditation today is from Romans chapter 3, or sorry, chapter 4, verse 13, righteousness that comes by faith. Righteousness that comes by faith. It so happened that it's an imagination. I want you to kind of just come along with me in my imagination as well. Imagine that you're walking into a new foreign land, and in the center of the city, you see a beautiful mansion, a beautiful place that attracts you, and you've been so attracted by the architecture of that entire building. It's in the center of the city, and as you walk through that, um, you know, you come across the owner of the mansion who is just standing there in front of uh, the mansion, and you go there, and he seems to be a very friendly person that he talks to you. He also um, knows that you are attracted by the mansion. He offers to, um, to kind of just take you over the mansion, take you inside the mansion, and just... Um, so he, he kind of takes, a, takes you into the mansion. So imagine that you're walking into the mansion. You see this beautiful uh, grandeur, um, and it amazes your thoughts. And you can't imagine like such a beautiful building in the center of the city. Uh, he tells you, know, you the story of how he had uh, got this uh, building. And he tells that, like, you know, the story of, you know, uh, his great-grandfather, who uh, was a very hard-working man, who kind of earned a lot of wealth, invested wisely, and ultimately, like, you know, that helped him to build uh, such a beautiful mansion. And therefore, from his uh, great-grandfather, he gets it to the grandfather and then to the father, and now this man is able to enjoy and as you kind of really hear this story, you are awestruck and you're impressed and you continue walking through the mansion and you see a lot of gates or a lot of doors that are locked and you kind of notice those doors and that you cannot enter into it, but you ask the owner about why these you know, rooms are locked. And the owner tells you that there, there, there are you know, precious treasures inside those rooms and that has been passed down from generation after generation after generations. And that's when, as a stranger, you suddenly realize uh, that you have no claim to any of these treasures. You are able to admire them, you are able to um, you know, uh, see them, but you cannot possess them. They all belong to the owner of the family and probably belongs to their lineage their generations and generations. In the same way today, I want you to kind of uh, take the Bibles and open up Romans chapter 4, verses 13, which talks about a similar kind of lineage that has been sent from uh, Abraham. Let me read it for you. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be higher of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Like how we saw the stranger, you know, as a stranger, you are not able to possess those. You know, it has been given as a gift. Even to the owners, it's been just given as a gift. It was not through the hard work of the owner, but it was like the hard work of the great-grandfather that the, that the treasures and the mansions were just passed on to the generation. And today we're going to be looking at a central theme of Romans. And this verse is so significant. This verse is so significant uh, because it highlights uh, the crux or the centrality of the gospel. It highlights the centrality. This verse, uh, Romans, it'd be great if you could just remember this verse, Romans 4.13. It, it, it actually kind of highlights the centrality of the message of gospel. Um, what is the message of gospel? 
So shall we move to the next slide? Salvation is not earned through the works of the law, but it is a gift that is received by faith. And I'm sure we, all of us know this. But sometimes we had, we would have actually kind of passed this all and like, you know, it could have actually gone over and above our heads. Salvation, that's the message of the gospel. That's the crux of the gospel. Salvation is not earned through the works of the law, but it is the gift that is received by faith. And today, as we reflect on these verse, I would like to share and highlight the importance of faith in our lives. Highlight, and Im highlight the importance of faith in our lives as, and also a relationship to God. Like how does faith connect to God? And how do we really kind of get the salvation? And I, do you need to work towards it? Or is it a gift? It just says salvation is a gift it's a gift, a free gift that is received out of the faith that you have in Christ Jesus. I want to talk about uh, three things that, uh, will, that I want to leave it with you from this verse. The first one is the promise to Abraham. Can we move to the next slide? Importance of faith in our lives has three major components. The promise to Abraham and his offspring promise to Abraham and his offspring. Let me just look out, look, I mean, go a little deeper into this first point, promise to Abraham and his offspring. Paul, to the Romans, he writes about the promise that God made <coughs> to Abraham that we find in Genesis chapter 17, verses 4 to 8, and we see that God promised Abraham and to make Abraham a great nation. And that was the promise that God blessed Abraham with. And this promise was not based on any work of Abraham. Let me, let me repeat that again. God did not bless or God did not give this promise to Abraham because Abraham did one, two, three, four, five for the Lord. No. As you know that, it was based on a God's grace as a response to his faith. As you all know, Abraham, Abraham took his son, Isaac, and you know what happened, how the faith was demonstrated there. And God was so pleased to see the faith of Abraham. And that is, way, that is where we see that it was not through the works of Abraham that God blessed Abraham. It was only through the faith. It was mere grace and faithfulness. And through this promise, we see that Abraham became the father of many, many nations. And his offspring became the highest of the world. And as we look upon it today, I believe that this promise is not just for Abraham, but for anyone who puts their faith in God. Abraham put his faith in God when there was a tough time, when he had to sacrifice his own son. He believed and he had this faith in God. And today it holds good for us as well as we put our faith in God. He is ready. God is so good and ready to bless us with a similar kind of a blessing that he blessed Abraham with. The second thing that I wanted to share with you is the contrast between law and faith. And as we kind of keep moving into Romans, we are going to be looking more deeper into what is law and how does, you know, what is law and what is faith, what is grace we're going to be looking a lot about that. But today, I want to kind of just talk to you about just a few things about the law, how law and faith are contrast to each other. And Paul brings this concept here between the law and faith to emphasize the importance of faith in our salvation process. Faith is a very important process, a very important element in the process of salvation. And Paul brings it very clearly in this particular verse that it is not by the law, but it is by the faith. And the law reflects or the law talks more about God's commandments to the Israelites. If you go back to uh, Exodus chapter 19 and 20, how God gave these laws. And especially these laws were for the people uh, to show the people their sin and also the need for a savior. 
God gave these commandments, these laws, so that the people of Israel would understand that they are sinful in their nature and that they may need a savior. But however, no one could perfectly, you know, keep the law. And it was not possible to earn that salvation through the works. Through the law, it wasn't possible to earn the salvation. But you know what? It was only through the faith in Christ Jesus that you could earn salvation. And Paul beautifully puts that here in this verse between the law and faith. We are not saved by the law. But when we put our trust in Jesus, when we put our trust in God, we are justified by faith. We are justified by faith and declared righteous before God. And that's the reason why Paul brings that contrast here to emphasize the importance of faith and how faith can transform your life, how faith can, uh, you know, uh, be, make you more righteous. And as I say this, I want to move to the last one, the righteousness of faith. The righteousness of faith. The righteousness of faith is the key to our salvation. Again, I'm coming back to the crux of it. Salvation can be earned or it cannot be earned, but it is a gift through the faith that you have in Christ. Righteousness of faith is the key to the salvation. And as we see that we are not saved by our own works. The Bible was clearly say that, like, you know, our righteousness are filthy rags. It is so the dirtiest of dirty. It doesn't even qualify in the sight of the Lord. If we say that we are righteous, it does not qualify us. But we are saved by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It is not our own righteousness. It is the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we are saved. So when we put our faith in Christ Jesus, you know, his righteousness is imputed into us. You know, we are not so righteous, but when we put our trust in Jesus, his righteousness is imputed into us. And therefore, we could we are counted as righteous before God. And that's where God, when he looks at us, you know, we, we say that like we need to become more like Jesus. And how? To put our faith in Christ Jesus. That is when we will become more like him. When we put our trust in Jesus, when we put our faith in Jesus, his righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ imparts into us, comes into us, imputes into us. And therefore, we are counted as righteous before God. When God sees us, he may be able to see his son in us, and therefore we are counted as righteous. And I think we need to accept this gift, a gift that is so given freely to all of us. And this gift, you know, transforms us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we are enabled, like, you know, to, to live a life, we will be enabled to live a life that will be pleasing to God. And that is where very clearly Paul talks about this, saying that Abraham, you know, he had this, uh, uh, you know, did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Abraham and his offspring, that he would be higher of the world, did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It was not through the law. The promise to Abraham and his offspring was not based on Abraham's work, but it was based on Abraham's faith. Law and faith is completely contrast. It's not our own law. It is not our own uh, ability to kind of uh, work for the Lord and receive salvation. No, salvation process comes through the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. And the righteousness of faith talks about the righteousness of Jesus Christ that would be imputed in us when we have the faith in Christ Jesus, when we trust Jesus Christ. And that is when we will be counted righteous. And as, we, as I want to kind of conclude, it's, this is a powerful reminder, you know, of the gospel. Salvation, you know, cannot be earned, but it is a gift that is received by faith. And I pray that today we will be able to understand 
the grace of God, the faithfulness of God, and let us put our trust in Him. Let us put our faith in Him. It is to know the unknown. Faith is, the, is to know the unknown. Is, you know, just blind, blindly believe in God because He is a God who is sovereign, who has control over everything. You might be wondering what, I mean, God is not listening to our prayers. We have a lot of prayer points in our WhatsApp group. Sometimes God, I feel like, what is God doing? But, but my dear beloved, my, my, my uh, comprehension is very limited when I compare it with the sovereign Lord. He knows everything. He does everything, you know, so meticulously that we, are, we don't need to be worried about it. All that we need to do is to just put our faith in God, in Him. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, may God help us to live a life that is, that is always pleasing to God. And so that we are considered righteous before God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. And as we, Lord, looked at the word, we thank you for your word that so strongly came to us today. It was not by the word that we can earn our salvation, but it is a mere gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift that is given to us. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, that we will continue to have faith in you. And Lord, a faith that would be unchangeable, a faith that would continue to grow and grow in, each, in, 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 um, in, in multiples, Lord. Help us to have that kind of a faith, a faith of uh, Abraham, uh, the faith that our forefathers had. We sing those hymns, beautiful hymns, and I pray that we will have that application in our lives Help us to have faith in you. Help us to, Lord, trust you. No matter whatever the situations might be looking, Lord, even if the, if the situation grows dim, we know that, oh, Father, the God who, who is control over the entire universe is with us. Help us to have and put our faith, our entire trust in you. And help us, Lord, to live a life that would be worthy of your calling. Help us to, Lord, present ourselves before God as a righteous as, as God's child, Lord, help us to be pure and holy, Lord. We thank you for this time of reflection. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.